الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful, the Lord of the universe and of everything that's in it, the one and only one supreme being in existence, uh, the one most worthy of bowing to him in obedience and submitting to his instructions willingly and cheerfully, Allah, our creator, the creator of the universe and of everything that's in it, the one and only one Lord of the universe without parallels, partners or sanditudes, without wives, children or descendants because he is the eternal and he is in his qualities, he is above all his creation. Nothing in his creation looks like him. In the name of that Lord alone, I greet you all in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, mercy and blessings be with you all. This episode in our program, Reason, is to present enough evidence to the supremacy of the Holy Quran and the supremacy of Islam above all religions and the Quran above all books because this is the only word of the divine being in its divine purity and in its divine language. Although we believe in all the previous revelations, yet they have either been completely lost or suffered a great deal of distortion. So the supremacy of the Quran is plain and obvious. And we do not need to present more uh, evidence than the fact that it has been preserved over the past 14 centuries in its original language, preserved by the will of Allah word to word and letter to letter. Being the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has to be absolutely different from the human writings. It's unique in everything, in its language, in its wisdom, in its knowledge, in its narration, in its uh, anticipations and uh, telling of future events. There is not a single angle from which an objective person looks at the Holy Quran without coming out with enough evidence to support this fact that it is the word of the Creator in its divine purity. I recall a French medical doctor with the, main, with the name Maurice Bocay came across the Holy Quran in a French translation. And stemming from his scientific background, uh, cosmic verses in the Holy Quran attracted his attention immensely. So he wrote a wonderful book with the title La Bible, le Quran et la science, the Bible, the Quran and science. And in that book, he divided the book into two halves. In the first half of the book, he showed quite easily that all cosmic notions in the uh, book of Genesis are completely wrong. And in the second half of the book, he showed that every single scientific notion in the Holy Quran is absolutely correct. And as a Catholic who had not embraced Islam at that time, he wrote that book, and towards the end of the book, he said that this means that the Old and New Testaments have suffered alteration, while the Quran was saved from any human infiltration. <coughs> because of this, we claim that the Quran is reason, is uh, intelligence, is truthfulness in the broadest sense of the word. To testify to this, we are discussing tonight, or in this episode, uh, a verse that came in Surah An-Nur, the light. And the verse reads, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, this is chapter 24 in the Holy Quran. The verse is number 45 in this chapter. It reads, Wallahu khalaqa kulla dabatim min ma. Faminhum may yamshi ala batn. Waminhum may yamshi ala rijlain. Waminhum may yamshi ala arba. Yakhluku Allahu may yasha. Inna Allaha. Something absolutely strange. Why should a book of guidance, a book that outlines the way of life to men and women of all times, indulge into talking about uh, cosmic phenomena or cosmic facts uh, like the animals that tread on the surface of that planet? The verse reads, and Allah has created every animal, every trodder on the surface of that planet from water. Of them, there are some that creep on their bellies, 
some that walk on two legs, some that walk on four limbs. Allah is capable of creating whatever he wills because he is capable of everything. And this is one of the qualities of God, one of the divine qualities. There cannot be two gods in this universe. There cannot be three gods in this universe. He is one and only one supreme being who has created everything according to his will and according to his plan. Before I talk about this verse, I would like to ask our friends here to tell us about their reflections when they first came across this wonderful verse in Surah An-Nur. We will begin by Hatim to see what uh, he got out of reading this verse. Yes, it was, well, the first reflection I got from this verse is how all the Quran is in harmony together because it reminds me with the, the another verse that says that where, says, where, where Allah says that uh, we created everything from water. So uh, having this harmony among uh, all the verses in the Quran, in the Holy Quran, uh, proves that this, uh, all these verses are from one source and it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, this is showing the, the harmony uh, of all verses together and how uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered the same message but in, sometimes in different ways in different verses. Barakallah feek. Uh, this is why the Holy Quran tells us in another place, وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا If this book was from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, many discrepancies would have been uh, discovered in it. Exactly. But there is not a single discrepancy in the whole of the Holy Quran. Uh, I would like to ask Dalia to tell us uh, her reflections about this verse. Uh, in previous episodes, uh, you've elaborated, Doctor, or in uh, the scientific miracles of other branches of science like astronomy and geology. Yes. It's not surprising to see uh, the Holy Quran uh, touching uh, on another branch uh, of uh, science so strongly and confidently, again stating the facts, that which is the science uh, of biology, the science of life. Uh, I see uh, a basis of uh, classification uh, by classifying the animals according to the number uh, of legs, which was not known but uh, maybe by the 18th or 19th uh, century. And the verse didn't uh, only uh, say that this is, uh, this is only exclusive for, for this classification, but uh, it was open by saying that Allah created what he wills for verily Allah is capable of doing and his power is more and more beyond uh, this. Barakallah feek. And I uh, would like to ask uh, Wa'il to tell us uh, his reflections. Actually what I have here is a question because it says in the verse that, yes. that God created everything from water. Yes. Um, there must, God doesn't, uh, doesn't do anything for, 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 for a no good enough reason. There has to be a good enough reason why he created everything from water. Yes. Yes. I mean, the human body is, is composed of 71% of water. Yes. So uh, why wasn't it like, for example, diamonds, given that diamonds is, is so expensive and so rare? Yes. Why is it water? Yes. Barakallah uh, First of all, uh, water is the strongest solvent we know of. And uh, water is the medium by which... Uh, all the minerals of the soil and the chemical compounds of the soil can be transmitted to plants and from plants to animals and from both plants and animals to man. So the medium of transferring um, the uh, rocks of the earth or the soil of the earth into flesh is water. Yeah. And without water, this could have never taken place. Yeah. Secondly, we know th today that uh, life started mainly in water. The oldest record of life on Earth goes back to 3.8 billion years. And uh, the first record of land life goes back to 400 million years. So 3,400 million years, life was mainly restricted to water. Mm -hmm. So uh, this verse uh, refers to this, you see. Life originally started and originated in water. And as you correctly said, the bulk of the body of any living being is water. Many plants have got more than 90% water. Many animals have got more than 90% water. The human beings, uh, as an uh, embryo, it gets more than 90% water. But as an adult, 71% water and the rest are uh, solids. 
and uh, one of the living medical doctors said that uh, why man is so proud of himself if we analyze his body he will be no more than a bag of water <laughs> uh, really um, uh, some lime that will not paint uh, uh, half a wall and uh, some iron that would make only a head of a nail and some sulfur and phosphorus that would make the head of uh, a match uh, a stick you see why, why man is so uh, proud of himself and so uh, arrogant and so conceited why because he does not know his real message in this world if he knows that he is a creation of a great creator who would hold him in accountability on the day of judgment he would have never been so arrogant and so aggressive and so uh, uh, unfair and unjust to others so this verse really is unique Allah خَلَقَ كُلَّ دَابَّةٍ مِنْ مَا Anything that moves on the surface of that earth was originally created from water. And if we go around and look in, in anything, plants, animals, humans, uh, water constitutes the bulk of their bodies. Not only this, but any biological function in that body cannot take place in the absence of water. Uh, beginning from the intake of food, its digestion, its assimilation, its secretion, uh, sweat, uh, tears, uh, all this cannot go without water, you see. So all the metabolism or the vital functions in the body of a human being or an animal or a plant cannot take place in the absence of water. Not only this, um, for example, a human being can withstand hunger for several weeks. He cannot withstand thirsty for more than three, four days. Uh, he, he would be completely de de uh, desiccated and de de he may pass away completely. So uh, water is the essence of life. And that's why this verse spells this fact beautifully. Wallahu khalaqa kulla dabbatin min ma. Every single strudder on the surface of that planet was originally created from water. And the other verse which uh, our friend here mentioned at the beginning uh, is even more encompassing because it carries both land life as well as marine life because actually everything was created originally from water uh, take for example plants you see water is a, is a unique liquid it has got a high surface tension it has got the character of capillarity and that's why you can get a tree uh, 20, 30, 40 meters high. And Allah has given water the capacity to move in the wood cells of that tree to reach the peak without the surface tension, without the characteristic of capillarity. Uh, the, this plant could have never existed, you see. So Allah is mentioning his bounties upon his creation that he has made uh, this creation out of water. The uh, living functions of everything on the surface of that planet cannot go on without water. Uh, life started originally in water, and then we had land life. All this is encompassed in this simple verse, Wallahu khalaqa kulla dabbatin min ma. And then, uh, quite justifiably, as Dalia mentioned, this is a basis of taxonomic classification. At a time when nobody knew taxonomy, really at the time of revelation of the Holy Quran, no, nobody heard about taxonomy or classification of life forms. You see, Allah is giving us a hint that one of the tools of classifying animals is the way they walk. And actually, it has been proved that the, the way of moving around, not necessarily walking, the way of moving around uh, of an animal is a very important tool for classifying the animal life. Nowadays, we know more than uh, uh, three uh, one million and three quarters of a million of animal forms living. And each form is represented by billions of individuals. And of course, each form has got a way and, or a, a particular system that helps it to move around searching for food or flying away from enemies or hiding from a uh, change of weather, uh, moving away from one environment to the other. And the way of movement is a testimony to the miraculous work of the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, the ayah says, فَمِنْهُمْ مَا يَمْشِي عَلَى بَطْنِهِ 
and we have a big group of animals called reptiles. Reptos in Latin uh, means creeping on the ground. And most of the reptiles, like snakes, like uh, uh, all the other reptiles, or most of the other reptiles, actually, they move on the ground. And they move in a very swifty manner. A snake can twist its body, uh, really, 180 degrees, without its backbone breaking. And this is a testimony to the work of the Creator Himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. All these reptiles, Allah has given them a very uh, rough skin and has given them on the skin horny scales that can protect their bodies. Because if they creep on the ground and rub their body against the ground, they can do them quite a lot of harm. But Allah has given each form of these reptiles a, a hard exoskeleton, a hard covering to protect it as it moves around. Some of these reptiles have got uh, two legs and the other two legs have been modified into hands um, and we find this phenomenon in many 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 groups of, of animals uh, really to find the four limbs two of them have changed into uh, hands and the other as legs uh, as in the case of man uh, the four limbs in many animals remain as four limbs but when you come to the birds all birds the four limbs have been modified into wings so that they can fly and they walk on two legs only. And we have uh, most of the mammals like cows, horses, uh, donkeys, uh, monkeys. Uh, these work on four legs. And some of the mammals, Allah has given them the hint that they can modify their four limbs and to, to, to be something like a, a grasping hand. Uh, so Allah is showing his bounties upon us in diversifying the means of movement uh, amidst animals. Some move on their bellies, uh, creeping around. And as I said, um, some of these uh, snakes uh, has got vertebrae of up to 40 vertebra. And it can twist its body 180 degrees without these verte vertebrae breaking away. Because Allah has given it a certain mechanism to give it that, that uh, uh, flexibility without breaking away. You would not imagine, if you do this for yourself, you can break your backbone, you see. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the reptiles this facility, which is again a testimony that things are created for purpose. They are not randomly made. So the verse mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, made this pattern of movement, uh, a technique by which man can classify organisms in every big group. Uh, whether they, these are mammals or reptiles or amphibians or birds or uh, any group, you can classify them on the basis of the mode of movement. Whether they creep on the ground, whether they have only two limbs or they have four limbs and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can create whatever he wishes. And this ending is again very important because uh, we now know that there are uh, animals that have got 100 legs or 1,000 legs. We have centipedes Senti in Latin means hundred, and ped means foot. Centipedes, animals having a hundred legs. And millipedes, milli means one thousand, and peds means fo feet, one thousand feet. And that's why the uh, uh, verse ends, Wallahu yakhluqu ma yasha, Wallahu ala kulli shayin qadir. Allah creates what he wishes, what he desires, because he is capable of doing everything. And uh, with this, I would like to hear uh, uh, your comments. Uh, we have Shaza to tell us uh, what she gets out uh, this verse. Well, what I really find amazing is the um, the number of the Lord's creation, no. the the number of the animals, as you were mentioning, and their diversity. They're they're so different, yet, yeah. uh, and and at the same time, they're so dependent. Uh, there's a, a a life cycle and a food chain, but yet, they're all in harmony, yeah. and. It's this perfection of, of, of uh, Allah's creation <laughs> that is amazing. Mm. And when I think of that versus um, what the human, with his knowledge now, that we have achieved now, has, um, has tried in an attempt to uh, apply his knowledge or to improve his lifestyle, um, uh, has resulted in, um, in harming the environment and in, in actually um, uh, causing pollution and even endangering species. Yes. Um, and the difference between what 
Allah has, how Allah has perfected and our, our attempt to, uh, the difference is, is amazing. And I, I feel that um, if we look at this difference and also if we compare it to the Quran, the book, the Quran, we will find whoever who decides to read it that the difference between the Quran and any other book that they would read would be the same difference as when they look at the uh, you know the life as God created it versus our attempt to. Barakallah <laughs> Strangely enough, any uh, change in the system of uh, our planet uh, that is natural, it rectifies itself naturally. Exactly. But any infiltration of the human pollutants cannot be rectified yeah. unless we stop uh, mm. uh, yeah, playing around with, yeah. the, with the environment. <laughs> I would like to hear, uh, May, what would you say? I think, Doctor, you have vividly showed uh, one of uh, the miraculous characteristics of Quran, that it addresses uh, everybody and it invades um, all sci sciences and um, uh, all uh, fields. And uh, the part where you said, يخلق الله ما يشاء This also tells us that even the species or genera that we haven't identified up till this day either due to lack of knowledge or uh, um, due to cross fertility will still be classified in this classification that has been uh, stated in the Quran and um, I'd also like to add that uh, the, the chapter is called Surah Al-Nur which yeah. uh, you have uh, told us before that it is enlightening yeah. and it is actually enlightening because it teaches us through Allah's uh, beautiful teaching. Barakallah feek. Actually we get also from this verse the meaning that the creation testifies for the creator. They all were created out of water and the unity of the basis of the element of creation is a testimony to the unity of the creator himself subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, um, the pattern of creation is equally the same in everything. Uh, the structure of the elementary particles that constitute these bodies are exactly the same. Everything has been created in pairs so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remain exalted in his singularity above all his creation without parallels, partners or similitudes, without rivals, uh, wives or children because these are human qualities and Allah ex is exalted, is highly exalted above the qualities of his creation. And uh, with this, we come to the end of the episode, uh, hoping to meet again, inshallah, in another episode of this wonderful program, Reason, which uh, presents enough logic and enough intelligence to everybody to testify that the Quran is the word of the creator in its divine purity and testify to the Prophethood and Messengerhood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, uh, mercy and blessings be with you all.